Hello viewers and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 5. On the last turn we killed off Persia, we kicked him off the planet. Um, and now we control the better half of the continent. We have four cities and we have one sieve left on the continent and it's Babylon. I'm just going to make peace with Venice was allied to Persia and now we have to reassess our situation um, I have three good city sites, cities on good spots, on river lots of food and production and I can squeeze in one more here and I have a few other city spots, I can probably place around eight more cities if I really want to but what worries me is uh, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon I vowed to make a warmonger game and it seems that Babylon is amassing his armies as well he has iron and I want to take him out actually so this is where info addict comes in really handy. You can actually see how he is doing Babylon or Nebuchadnezzar in the world rankings and you can compare your own uh, ranking with his. So let's e do exactly that. We are first in number of population, uh, number of cities, second in population, first in land area, but this is important. Active military duty, we are second and in the literacy rate, which is the tech base, we are also second. We have 15 techs discovered. And now let's compare us to Babylon. Uh, he is the first in military. Um, he is the first in tech and he has three more techs than we do. Which is scary. He also has four social policies. We have only two. And if we look at the global politics, you can see actually which policies he picked, or at least the tree from which he picked, and he went with honor. So honor plus largest military force on in the world equals, and plus he ran out of expansion room, except for our lands. Um, it means that he is going to go after, uh, after me or us sooner or later and I wonder if it's possible to do a preemptive strike actually so how I'm going to do that um, I have one two three four five six legions three ballistas which is a respectable force um, maybe I could add another legion and that might be enough to take out the very defensive and ranged weapons oriented uh, Babylon. It still isn't a guarantee though, so it's going to be a gamble if I decide to do so, and I probably will have to. Um, so checking the info addict or in any other way finding out how strong your op potential opponent is is very important um, he probably has steel already since he went all military and we don't have steel yet actually we can have it in 32 turns maybe a little bit less if uh, our cities continue to grow but it's still a long time and if I was playing any other sieve rather than room I would give up I would wait to rifles to attack Babylon, but since we have the legions and the ballistas, the ballistas are just actually just a few points short of being a trebuchet in strength, and the legions are five points of strength short of being a longsword, which is uh, actually a little bit, uh, you know, stretching our. Uh, um, uh, it's a little bit helping us actually. We can pull off 
probably a medieval war with ancient, uh, a, a, actually classical units of Rome. So, if uh, that's the plan, and okay, first thing I noticed, I don't need to build this settler yet. Uh, this uh, college, the National College, which will boost our research significantly, will be done in 25, maybe 15 actually, when the pub grows happens, turns, and I don't need this settler yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest into another legion, which will be done in 10 turns. Um, it's probably going to be the last investment, hammer investment, into military for this part of the game. I'm not willing to spare any more turns. I have just, I have only two cities, and I want these cities to start be working on infrastructure, because it's turn 112 and the the game moves on you know so if i can manage to win a war against babylon with these forces um i'll happily do so if i don't i'll just try to sign a peace treaty and get to it later with rifles or i don't know when it doesn't really matter so there is when you want to start a war like I do, there is one more thing, except for the demographics and the assessment of his uh, military potential to do, and that's to drain him of all his money, if possible. Maybe on higher difficulties than um, Emperor it's not possible, but I think in our situation it is. So he has 400 gold and 14 gold per turn, and if he has steel, he can use this money to upgrade his units. Um, he probably has catapults, mostly, but he also has swords. And I want him to, you know, I want that money for myself. So let's see what we can sell him um, for, that, for that kind of money. I can sell him incense for 300 gold. Uh, yes, and... I can sell him maybe, mm, I don't know, horses. We don't have horseback riding anyway. Yeah, for 90 gold maybe. Okay, yes. And now he's down on 10 gold and he is earning 14 gold per turn. So I'm going to also sell him my open borders. 10 gold and I don't know 1 gold per turn there we go and now he has 0 gold and 13 gold per turn so even if his upgrades are cheaper than mine because we are playing on a higher difficulty level he is still not going to be able to upgrade more than 2 units in the next I don't know 20-30 turns so simply by trading um, I delayed his upgrades, uh, ignoring his tech pace uh, by a long time. Now I need to use this window, these 20 turns, say, to capture this city here and to tech steal myself. You know? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm 12 turns now from metal casting, but steel will be done much faster because by the time I get to steel, this National College will probably be complete. Um, I see only three, five tiles, six hammers now, but I'm going to boost this production with these four hammers as well, and that's going to be a significant change. Um, I didn't scout out his lands, and I'm afraid I don't have time to. Don't do the same mistake as I am going to do in your games. Scout him out first. Uh, use a few turns, spare a scout, sign open borders, pay money for the for it if you if if you need to, or use a I don't know a ship. In any case, try to find out where his cities are, how many resources does he have, uh, horses and iron, or in the later eras, oil and aluminum, and hit those. Uh, hit those cities, hit those tiles, pillage those tiles, make his army weaker than it is. Uh, I don't have, unfortunately, the time to do it now, but that shouldn't prevent you from doing it. 
just the way I scouted out Persia first. I spent warrior all around uh, his ci uh, his cities just to see what other possibilities he has for um, you know uh, for placing his cities or what resources he might or might not have. So I'm going to what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plan an attack on this city here, Dur Kurigelzu or something. It has it's strategically important site. It has iron, six iron, fish, horses, dyes, sheep, uh, wet, which is not on desert. Um, and it also it seems has pyramids as well. So I need to capture that city and to do so I will have to uh, thin out his forces first. If you're going to attack a sieve, especially a sieve that is stronger than you in military, you can't just assault his cities because he can reinforce his armies rather quickly there and the cities themselves will bombard your units. So you need to draw you need to draw them out and you need to meet them in the field of battle. In in this case, these hills here and these hills here and these forests and jungles here are a perfect way to make his armies uh, suffer by placing your catapults or my catapults here onto these hills and my legions here into protected areas outside of the range of his city bombardment and you know he will have no choice but to move into these plains and desert and this is where our ballistas and legions will kill them and once we thin them out when you check the info edict again and once his armies are thinned out then we can proceed to capture the city with these units that were here and these units that are here can proceed here to block any reinforcements coming to the city and probably uh, you know pre prep for an assault on the capital itself by that time I suppose we will already have steel so that's going to be you know much easier then um, so that's the plan now let's see how well I can execute it I think it's a sound plan but I don't know what he has up there does he have more iron does he have an allied city-state um, does he have more horses uh, does he have a large amount of units and, I don't know, ships roaming around? I don't know anything about that. The only things I can tell is his military might, number of attacks, uh, his social policies, uh, which don't serve him well now that uh, he's going to be attacked. He was probably, you know, better off going with uh, tradition. I can see his wonders and I can see his money. And that's it. So I use the information that I have to plan my invasion. And now what I need to do is to heal up these units and start them moving out. Okay, great general up here. These guys will heal up. These guys too. I don't have much time, but I need my units in full health. Uh, let's move this catapult up here to the hill. I'm actually going to scout a bit with my great general. I hope he doesn't declare or anything. Okay, so he has swords. Definitely. I'm going to move one more turn here to see what he has in the city and if he has a road connection here. And... We have a legion being built here and I have almost 900 gold now and I can probably, I can probably um, rush by another unit if need be, but I would rather not promote a unit to rough terrain uh, bonuses and okay, next turn. You guys move up with the 
Liste. Start on the road to connect the cities for some money. Okay, so he does have a road. He has an archer here. He's bowman. And I don't see any more units here, but you know, that doesn't mean anything actually. I'm going to 